Hi everybody, Mr. Tegmeyer here again. This is part four of Introduction to Electricity. So we've covered in part one the atomic theory of electricity, and in part two we developed some mathematical relationships and some equations called Ohm's Law, and we also talked about Kirchhoff's Law, which discuss how, uh, uh, how we can look at uh, current and voltage in different kinds of circuits. Part three, we looked at series circuits, and finally we're going to cover parallel circuits. So let's get started. So just a, a real quick recap. This was in part three, so this is not new. We're going to focus on parallel circuits. So parallel circuits offer multiple paths for electricity to flow. The key point, key point in a parallel circuit is that I can cut a wire, I can have a failure in any of those components, and I'll still have electricity flowing through the circuit. And also recall from the, uh, I think it was part two, Kirchhoff's Law. It's worth taking a look at again. Kirchhoff's Law say that the uh, sum of all voltage drops in a series circuit equal the total voltage applied, and we looked at that in part three. Part four, we're going to take a look at Kirchhoff's current law, which covers parallel circuits and current. So let's take a look. Well, a parallel circuit, as we've talked about, uh, is a kind of circuit where you can have multiple paths for electricity to flow. And indeed, what you will find is that it does take both paths. If I remove one of the light bulbs, what's going to happen to the other one? It's still going to be lit because it still has a closed path for those electrons to complete the circuit. Well, let's take a look at uh, a circuit and analyze it. So here we have a, a schematic of a parallel circuit. We have a 15 volt supply, a 15 volt battery if you will. Our first resistor, R1, has 470 volts. A second one has 2200, I'm sorry, ohms, 470 ohms. Our second resistor has two, 2200 ohms or 2.2 kilo ohms. And the third resistor has 3.3 kilo ohms. And by the way, using that terminology, kilo ohms, is an industry standard. You wouldn't say 2200 ohms, you would say 2.2 kilo ohms. So some characteristics of a parallel circuit is that the voltage across each of those components, R1, R2, and R3, equals 15 volts. So VT equals V1 equals V2 equals V3. That's pretty simple. That's kind of nice to know. But we still want to figure out what the resistance is for uh, uh, each of those, and we want to find what the total resistance is because we know we're given the component values, but we want to know what the total resistance is in the circuit so we can figure out what the total current is. And then knowing total current, we can find out what the current is in each branch of that circuit. So we're going to analyze the circuit, and then we're going to see if Kirchhoff's current law applies. So let's take a look. Well, first we have to figure out what the total resistance is. And I want you to take a look at this equation because it is, is way different than the resistance for a series circuit. So the total resistance in a parallel circuit is 1 over the reciprocal of the individual components. Make sure you get the reciprocal correct. This is one way to write the equation, and I, I don't expect you to memorize these equations. We will go over them. But let's take a look at this. It looks kind of like a scary equation, but really all we have to do is plug in our values and do some math. So R1 in this case is 470 ohms. R2 is 2200 ohms and R3 is 3300 ohms. And when we plug those values in, we have to make sure that we take reciprocals when we're doing that math. If we do that math, we end up with 350 total ohms, which is a little bit counterintuitive, because if you look at R2 and R3, 
those are a lot bigger than 350 ohms. And in fact, 350 ohms is also less than 470. So your total resistance in a series circuit is less than the sum of all of the resistances, which is different than a series circuit. That's a key point that you need to know. All right, so let's take a look at voltage across each one. Well, as I mentioned in one of the previous slides, the voltage is the same. So VT is equal to V1 and V2 and V3 and so on, and that's given to us because we know that the power supply is 15 volts. So the voltage across all of those is 15 volts. So now we know what the resistance is, we're given that, and we know what the voltage is, uh, the total voltage. Let's take a look at what the total current is. So we just use Ohm's law, I equals V over R, and we can do it for components as well. So we just plug in our values. I at 1, the current through the, the branch that has the 470 ohm resistor is 15 volts over 470 ohms, and we get 32 milliamps. Similarly for the second branch, where the resistor has 2.2 kilo ohms, we get 6.8 milliamps. Now it seems like a small number, but that's pretty common. And then for the third branch, we find that the current is 4.5 ohms. So then our total is 43 milliamps. All we do is we take our uh, VT and we know our RT and then we apply Ohm's law. So the other way to do that is apply Kirchhoff's current law. And let's see that that's see if that's accurate. Uh, so we had IT of you know 43.3. We add them all up and we do get 43 milliamps. One thing that you need to be aware of, we're not going to do a whole lot, but we will have an example later in class. It's called a combination circuit. So here you see a, a parallel circuit. Two and three are parallel, but one is not parallel to those. So it's called a combination circuit. So what do you think would happen if we removed light three? What would happen if we removed light one? be able to answer that. And then finally, the last thing that we will consider, and we'll do some more work in class, is electrical power. Power is pretty straightforward. It's measured in watts, just like it is with other forms of power that you might be familiar with. Power is simply current times voltage. And that concludes all four presentations on introduction to electricity. You guys are now experts, well, almost experts. You're getting there.